This Government will not shirk our responsibility, however hard the task may be. There is an unfunded liability in defence of around £37 billion over the next 10 years. The equipment and support programme alone makes up over £20 billion of this. That is the equipment they planned without ever having an idea whether the budget would be able to afford it. Um, we know that uh, August is when the ministers are meant to be considering all the papers that were put forward at the end of July by the Ministry of Defence teams working on a huge range of subjects, 40-something papers. They're meant to be considering so hard decisions can be taken in September to be incorporated into the, um, the uh, comprehensive spending review in October. And the fact that he's come out and talked about the further reform work that's necessary uh, in the middle of August, I think, is, 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 um, is very timely. Um, it's certainly reinforcing that they are getting on with their own thinking on these subjects. Of course, he didn't let out any uh, hard choices information over capabilities. That wasn't what he was tending to do, although I expect the press were hoping for that, you know, cutting the Royal Air Force, what's happening to the carriers. Don't know yet, don't uh, yeah, and I think there's, there's still a lot of uncertainty there. But certainly what Liam Fox didn't do and what the defence community needed to hear was give some um, confidence that the defence budget uh, would not be being cut in a percentage basis along the lines that um, our colleague Malcolm Chalmers um, had projected but was being ring fence to some extent in order to keep Britain um, on the perch of, um, uh, of uh, being one of the uh, top nations in the world uh, through, to, through its defence capability and also reputation. Um, he didn't say that the budget was, as I say, um, protected in any sense. He implied that it was going the same way as all the other departmental budgets that haven't been specifically ring fenced and there may be consequences there, uh, particularly over this issue of Trident. The Ministry of Defence having Trident within its budget isn't itself problematic, provided the budget reflects that it's got Trident within it. If the, the, the budget has a ceiling which doesn't include Trident, it's a ceiling based on the previous calculations, um, and then you put Trident in, of course that means huge uh, cuts which would be, have been unexpected and a very different sort of military uh, to the one that I think the nation would expect us to have uh, for the future. Uh, he said that the armed services would have more control. He didn't actually uh, use the term service chiefs in connection because uh, one of the models for the future which has been suggested is uh, a compaction of the ranks and the structure of the individual services where the um, head of the service and the operation command chief are rolled into one four star and uh, that could go alongside uh, an operational command structure where you have a four star joint commander a full general or admiral um, under which the individual services will provide uh, what we call supporting or and component commanders, but the individual services have no operational command over their forces themselves, which is the American model. And um, what he said, it wasn't clear whether that was one of the routes which might be being considered, because that actually takes away responsibility from the services for operations, but could um, enhance their internal management independence. The major uh, arguments are now um, in the past, the current generation of service chiefs is very aware that uh, their only own goals to be scored if they are clearly perceived as uh, pushing their own capabilities. We've done that for um, on the army's side for we need an army for Afghanistan and of course the government says yes but we're looking beyond Afghanistan and there's a nation that says well, we won't be wanting to do another one for a while. Um, the, the, um, the RAF and the, um, and the Navy similarly um, do want a Navy the size of Belgium, the previous first sea lord. Um, and that sort of uh, trumpeting, uh, I think the current generation are aware that they've got at least to be seen to be working very closely together. It's not in the interest of defence as a whole. Um, 
bits that are hanging together rather than hanging apart, I think, which is rather important, and they will understand that.